my relationship with the institution began when I was uh, a child, uh, growing up within walking distance of Golden Gate Park. Uh, the museums, the aquarium included, were all free in those days. So uh, when we didn't want to play, you know, in the park, we would come in to the aquarium, play hide and seek because it was so dark. Uh, looked at some, I still remember some of the displays. Earl Harold was, uh, was a real stickler for, for diversity. And uh, he, he, he wanted to see no water. He just wanted to see fish in tanks. He was known for that. Now, I had no experience with trout and piranhas and alligator gars and that sort of thing. So I always wanted to work with the little jewel tanks, you know, the planted tanks with the small fish, because that's, uh, that's what I knew best. And, uh, but, you know, the, the area needed a bit of work. At, at one point toward the, uh, toward the time that we had to tear the place down, there, there were a number of fishes that were spawned in-house that were on display. Not so much with the larger fish, but now if you remember the guard tank with all the cichlids in it, a lot of those would, would spawn on display. And so there'd be a certain number of fry that would survive, grow up in the tank and replace the ones that the guards would eat. <laughs> well, they would eat one now and then. <laughs> I put a lot of extra time here that I didn't get paid for. <laughs> but it was fine because I, I was walking distance from home and uh, what, what better to, to do on a Saturday night when everybody else is out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, spend an extra hour or two behind the scenes. You know, the engineers would leave the lights on for you, you know, if they knew you were there. And uh, so you could just knock yourself out. It was, it was a great job.